Okay, uh, just a quick video summary for you guys um, on this particular one. We are um, at 208 Hanging Moss um, in Oviedo. And we're just kind of looking around a little bit to show you what's going on. Uh, the roof shingles are original and they're about 18 years old. They're not in bad shape, but they're going to need to re be replaced, I think, sooner rather than later. I would probably start budgeting for new roof shingles uh, anywhere between now, like the next year and three years. Uh, they could last longer, um, but that's not a guarantee. Typically in Central Florida, you're looking at about 20 years on a roof is a safe estimate before you want to start budgeting for replacement. And that's about where you are right now. So one to three years on the roof. As we walked around the property, I mean, the typical things that we see, like settlement in the driveway, these open cracks should be sealed. That's pretty normal. We see them a lot. They're at almost every house. Uh, but it's important to seal them so that you can maybe slow the separation down over time, which can happen. There's two water meters at this property at the southwest corner. One is your potable water for the house. The other one is for the irrigation system. There's a shutoff valve located at the west side of the garage wall here at the exterior. You can see that right here. Uh, as we went around the building, I also noticed that you have water softener system. Um, there is a leak here at this handle and you could see it if you watch it close enough it just keeps dripping over here. Uh, you'll want to repair that. I would get rain soft out here because that's the manufacturer of this here to see what you need to do um, to get it uh, to where it's uh, acceptable. Right now it seems like it may work uh, but it does need a little help. Um, the main electrical service disconnect panel is here on the west exterior wall. They gave you 125 amp service. They gave you that service largely because you have natural gas here powering what used to be the heater and the water heater uh, they have a gas hookup for a dryer and for a rain so it's possible that they calculated your amperage along with the fact that you're going to have natural gas here now if you're going to upgrade things to electric like the people who own the house right now whoever that is they've had the air condition changed out and that air condition now is operating fully on electric uh, so if you start to add electrical service, you might need to upgrade this 125 amp panel. After all, this house is 2,900 plus square feet. Um, as I went around the building, I see minor cracks in the stucco. That's pretty common. You can see if you look real close over here, you can see the cracks. You got some cracks, the first story and the second story. Stuff you'll want to pay attention to to make sure that, you know, you don't get any water penetration when you got a lot of wind and rain. Um, coming around the back side of the building, I mean, you can see... Uh, a lot of dirt here on the side, but the grade seems a little flat here, so you can make some improvements there. And as you walk around here, you can see that this is an area where water's not being controlled off this first level, and you can see the erosion back here at the patio and at the back of the house. I'm going to recommend that you have gutters installed here and then get some of these eroded areas filled up uh, to get the grade back to where it needs to be. Now here at the back exterior wall, there's an outlet here missing a cover. You'll see that in your electrical section. You don't want to leave that exposed to exterior elements because it will cause um, corrosion over time of the uh, actual electrical receptacle components. This outlet here, I don't know why it was installed or what it was installed for, but um, this one is a regular standard receptacle, um, but it's not GFI protected. Anything outside should be ground fall protected, so you're going to see that. Um, also in your electrical section in the inspection report. Looking around at the side of the building, I think this might have been the air conditioned service disconnect previously. I'm not really sure. There's no, uh, that disconnect is not hooked up. That's just a junction box now. That is serving as a junction box. As we walked around to the um, east side of the building, on this side of the building, you can see where the um, condenser unit for the HVAC system is installed. And there is a service disconnect there. Um, this unit was stalled without a permit, so there are some flaws with the installation, but the unit itself seems to be in good condition. Uh, installation flaws, for example, would be no hurricane brackets on the pad. That's required. Uh, things of that nature. As we walked around the rest of the building, I think that they did paint this, um, and that's, you know, that's why it looks fairly decent from the street. All right, uh, but you still have those minor cracks that you want to you wanna take advantage of getting them repaired just to make sure you don't get water inside. Now coming along this front part of the building here at the front porch, um, this is where the condensation line terminates. You can see it dripping over here. Uh, this is for the uh, HVAC system. 
And you can see this is a, a crack in the wall that was sealed up. Okay, you can see as you look around here. Now as we come along to the garage, I did notice a couple of things that we're going to want to make sure that you get addressed. Number one, the garage door opener is not really doing what it's supposed to. It, it has power to it. I checked the receptacle up top so I know it's getting power. But here at this um, control button, it's not really responding in any setting no matter what we do. So I'm going to recommend having someone look at that to get this uh, thing to be restored to proper function. This is the air handler unit. Um, we talked about how they converted. I think that the heater used to be gas, like the water heater. These pipes that were terminated probably were connected to the heater at one time and it probably used the hot water to heat the coils when you wanted to heat the house. Uh, that since has been removed, those pipes have been terminated and now you've got a heat pump unit installed. Uh, some of the things that happened here, they didn't put a permit on, like I said, they didn't pull a permit. You've got a substandard installation on the uh, condensation line. There is no float switch on the condensation line. There is no clean out access on the condensation line. And as we ran the air handler unit and the system, you can see, look at the garage floor here. You see this? See how wet that is? Um, I'm going to say that you got a little bit of a condensation issue happening here. So you need to have someone look at this and take care of it. The unit's new, so it shouldn't be an issue with the unit and a lifespan on the unit. But what, it is, what is an issue is the fact that you're getting condensation here. So when you look at the installation, the lack of a float switch and the way they installed this, um, you know, it just makes you want to have someone come and follow it up. Another example of that is look at how they did the electrical here. Um, this is substandard work and we'll just report it as such in the, in the, uh, in the home inspection report. This is the sub panel. Uh, Square D equipment's pretty good. You can see all your breakers in here. The panel legend, everything is labeled. That's good. They even got a, uh, a dedicated receptacle for a refrigerator here, which is always nice. All right, and uh, one more thing I'm going to show you before we wrap up the video is here inside the house. Here, as you walk in the living room and you come to the rear slider, look at the bottom here. Look at the trim, uh, particularly zooming in here. Okay, uh, these were live termites when we, when we were probing. We, we noticed our screwdriver went right through here and the termites did come out. Uh, so we're going to recommend having a qualified WDO inspector just evaluate this and naturally you're going to want to have this treated because you want those things exterminated. The damage does not appear to be sub uh, substantial. It seems to be centralized here to this location, but uh, you'll want to have the home treated for termites at this point. All right, so if you have any questions, give me a call um, and we'll be happy to answer them for you. But the big picture items are a roof replacement, at least the shingles, sometime in the next one to three years. The termite situation, an active condition that needs to be treated. Um, some problems with the air condition installation and some of the performance going on. We're going to have that in your inspection report as well. The water heater couldn't be tested today because the gas meter is off. Uh, so we'll want the utility company to turn that on safely. Check the water heater to make sure it's okay. Um, any gas lines that need to be terminated based on the new appliances that were installed should be done. And um, I think that's about it. If you have any questions, give me a call. Thank you very much for your business.